everyone. It's really great to be here with you today. And my name is Kristina Dimitrova. I am the founder of Interlaced. And today I want to talk to you about um, fashion's fundamental role for um, the adoption of emerging technologies. Now, think about what you're wearing today. It might be a suit or a jacket or a skirt. Um, and perhaps you wouldn't really label uh, your outfit as something that's fashion tech. But in fact, it is, because technology has been fundamental for the production of, of fashion throughout human history. Um, obviously, we've come a long way since uh, needles to the high-tech production machines that are used now for the creation of um, fashion. And this type of relationship um, that fashion and technology have is really symbiotic, but perhaps one that not many of us see. Um, so fashion is influencing areas in technology and also technology is uh, completely changing the way fashion is created, um, produced, and even communicated. I really love um, this quote by Coco Chanel, who says, fashion is not about something that exists in dresses only. Fashion is in the sky, in the street. Um, fashion has to do with ideas, the way we live, uh, what is happening. And what is happening now all around us is technology. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about wearable tech. Working with wearable tech has been around since the 1960s, but until recently, it was really small scale. Um, the, even though the technology has been uh, very promising, little has changed in terms of consumer adoption. Um, and part of the reason why is because not a lot has changed in terms of how uh, products look. So an example of this is the slide that you see behind me. Um, on one part, you see Steve Mann's uh, ITAP computer vision technology, and then on the other is the first look for Google Glass in 2012. And you can see the time difference between those two devices. Um, even though that these types of products have been really fundamental when it comes to pushing the wearable tech industry forward, the problem with them is that they are devices. So when we talk about um, smart, textile, smart uh, glasses and uh, trackers, the problem is that we can take them on and off and have a perfectly normal day without them. Think about it. If you are late for work and if you forget your tracker um, or even smart glasses, would you go back? Perhaps not. <laughs> I can see some of you shaking heads. Um, but what if I ask you to go outside without getting dressed? I think that is a completely different scenario, which is why I believe the future of wearable technology is, in fact, smart textiles and smart garments. Um, it, and it's not really um, a, a so, uh, so belief, uh, because the smart fabrics are predicted to reach 5.5 uh, billion uh, globally by 222nd. Which goes on to show that really, now that we've come comfortable with carrying technology, uh, we're really going to start to see the benefits of wearing it too. And even though when it comes to funding, um, the, the wearable tech industry has gained more funding uh, in, from medical, enterprise, and military, in recent years, fashion has really paved the way for how these types of emerging technologies are accepted in the wider industry and, and the public as well. So I want to talk to you about um, a case study for Google that um, really makes this, um, uh, exemplifies this. So when Google announced its first foray into wearable technology. It did so with Google Glass. And I believe we all know what Google Glass is, uh, augmented reality, headpiece device, also voice controlled. And the technology, when it was announced, was really groundbreaking. But um, in terms of how it looked, it really didn't um, make the cut when it comes to the fashion crowd and also the uh, everyday consumer. So these are some of the titles that discuss the design of, the, of Google Glass, and I'm sure you will agree they're not very complimentary. Um, and when Google announced that it's discontinuing Project Glass, Vanessa Friedman, who is the um, fashion director for the New York Times, uh, advised Google to really look 
look at the fashion industry for its next hire if it wanted to make glass a success when it comes to consumer adoption. Um, and Google really did take uh, uh, all of this criticism and feedback from uh, the industry and the wider public. And when it uh, announced that it's going again uh, to try and enter the wearable tech industry, it did so in a brilliant way uh, with Project Jacquard. So um, show of hands, who knows what the Project Jacquard is? Okay, a few of you. Okay, so for those of you who haven't heard of Project Jacquard, it makes it possible to weave touch and gesture interactivity into uh, items such as furniture or even clothing. So when uh, the tech giant announced that it's launching this type of technology, it also announced partnership with clothing company Levi's to create the first product with this type of technology, which is this, um, the smart commuter jacket. Um, how it works, it basically enables people to uh, access navigation information and change between the music that they're listening to, also uh, to answer or block incoming calls by just typing or swiping um, their hand over their uh, left sleeve of the jacket. So it works with a smart tag, which you can clip on to enable that interactivity of the garment, and also with an app that um, lets, it, lets you configure it when you, uh, when you start. And when you want to wash it, you just simply take the tag off uh, and just put it in the washing machine as you do with any other item that you own currently. And that's a really great project for both the fashion and the technology crowds, because for fashion designers, Jacquard enables um, everything to become another, another layer better. So designers can embed more services into the clothing, and developers can also uh, uh, create apps for a, any clothing that is enabled with Jacquard. And then for the users, most importantly, it enables us to uh, really take less time looking at screens or devices and uh, go about our day better and more empowered. But the role's, uh, fashion's role is not only to help us dress better and look more beautiful, uh, but also to expand our abilities. This is Superhuman Summit, so I want to tell you about a few different projects that really exemplify that. And the first one comes from New York-based company Wearable Experiments. Now, what they've recently developed is a pair of smart yoga pants that can guide you to a perfect posture. They work with an app um, and a little smart battery that you have to clip on um, behind, of your, behind your leg, behind your knee, um, to enable a sensation in the pants. And how it works is wh uh, when you um, are doing this pose that you're doing, uh, it can sense uh, if it's uh, the right one or if, it, if you can make it better and then true haptic feedback and real-time feedback, uh, it can navigate you towards that perfect pose. And this is really speaking about wearable experiments' vision to use the skin as an interface and really use technology to empower the human experience instead of overtaking it. But also, it, it has the potential to disrupt a whole industry. I mean, think about the yoga industry. There are more than uh, 15,000 registered yoga teachers in the US alone. Uh, imagine if you don't need to go to a professional to do that, but because the professional will be your clothing. Your teacher will be your pants, essentially. <laughs> um, the next one, uh, the next project is also really, really interesting and exciting um, in the wearable and fashion tech area. It comes from uh, another US-based company called Lumia, and they've essentially developed a system that enables you to smartify any, um, any garment. So the Lumia electronic layer uh, is a system that first has a circuit board with sensors that you can embed in any clothing, uh, and it tracks a different, a different changes in the environment. So temperature, touch, and light. All this information then is stored into a little hardware piece, uh, which people can access through an app. And they can then decide whether they want to share that information with either the company that's developed this product or other research companies. 
Now, based on that, they get rewarded um, with different different types of rewards based on what the company has chosen. Um, but as uh, in, as we move in an age where data is increasingly considered as a currency, this project shows that um, people can be rewarded for the type of data they're sharing and also gives them control into what they choose to share or not. And uh, of course, in return, they get better experiences. For example, the first project that Lumia is developing with this type of uh, technology is a pair of smart shoes, which can uh, sense whether you're uh, outside in the cold and then uh, warm you up, so heat you up automatically, uh, and as a, uh, as a result, again, provide a better experience. But perhaps one of the most exciting areas is how we're not only going to be better at what we do and have more enhanced abilities, uh, but also be able to, through fashion and technology, be able to understand how each of us feel. And this is a project that uh, a designer called Joanna here is working on. So she collaborated with neuroscientists and developed uh, this headpiece that you see behind me that people can control with their minds. So there is an EEG headset uh, in this headpiece and whenever, based on the concentration level of the user, the hat will light up and it will change pattern. So when your concentration level reaches 40%, then uh, the, light, the light will um, just be steady. And then when it reaches 70%, it starts blinking. And I've seen it in action, it's really fascinating. But that's only the first phase of the project. So the second phase of the project is um, pairing that hat with an app when, where you can see uh, all of this data and you can understand what factors are making you more concentrated or more relaxed. The third part of the project, the third phase, is uh, connecting that with uh, the web or an IoT system, which will enable you to essentially control things around you with your mind. So think, around, think about um, smart homes or a smart thermostat and things like that. And if you think that sounds ambitious, uh, the fourth and final stage of this uh, project is brain-to-brain uh, -brain communication without any uh, need for um, verbal communication. And that's something that is really powerful, not only in the fashion tech area, but also in terms of helping people with communication problems like autistic children. Um, and this project really goes on to show how we can enhance our ability and help uh, understand each other better better. Uh, essentially, this could um, really help us reduce uh, anxiety and depression and really understand ourselves in terms of what stimuli makes us more uh, active or less engaged. And to sum up, uh, smart textiles and all these developments in fashion and technology are really uh, a new way with which we interact with technology. You know, when we truly blend these two industries, um, the essentially what happens is the body will become the interface and the human being will become the UI. We'll live in such a sensory world that we'll, we're going to interact by simply being. And in a way, we will become technology. So my advice to you is to embrace this future and prepare for it, or risk feeling even more uncomfortable when it happens. Thank you. Thank you.